Thank you, Tony. Good Sabbath, everyone. Good to see everyone. And <clears throat> I don't know if one of you guys could turn on some more lights up here. It's a little dark up here. <laughs> so it would be nice. <laughs> There we go. Get a little more light on the on the word here, so, <laughs> so I can see what I'm reading. So, <clears throat> well, have you ever gone somewhere expecting uh, to get something and ended up uh, with something completely different than what you anticipated getting, and it ended up being better? Um, <clears throat> maybe that's happened to you. I know at times we've. Uh, you know, you get used to doing things a certain way, you get in a rut, we may go to a supply house to get a certain part or a certain tool, and we go there and they say, well, we don't have that anymore. And then you think, oh boy, what am I gonna do? I'm so used to using this. And then they say, well, try this. And then you say, okay. And then you try it and it's like, wow, that was a lot better. That made my job a lot easier. Or maybe you've gone to a restaurant and expected to get a certain meal and they say, well, we're out of that. And why don't you try this? And you say, okay. and then. You know, maybe you're not too pleased at first, and all of a sudden you find out, hey, that was pretty good, and that's, uh, uh, that's uh, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Or maybe at church. Maybe you come to church some morning, and you say, I expect to get a certain thing at church that day, and you end up getting something else, which was a lot better. And uh, hopefully that happens on a regular basis uh, to you. But, um, <clears throat> you know, that happens quite a bit to us in different parts, uh, different aspects of our life. But today let's look at a passage of a man who came expecting to get something and uh, he got what he came for, but he got a whole lot more than what he was expecting, something that was a whole lot better. So let's turn over to Mark chapter 2 um, and we'll read the first 12 verses of uh, the second chapter of Mark. <clears throat> Verse 1, it says, a man, or excuse me, a few days later when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So many gathered there, uh, so many gathered there that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. And some men came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. And since they could not get him uh, to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, lowered the mat the, mat the paralyzed man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He bla he's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, Take your mat and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. <clears throat> so as we read down through this story, we see the setting. There's Jesus comes back to his hometown, maybe even his very his own uh, his own home where he was living. But the huge crowds had followed him, and they were in his house, and they were outside the house, and there was really no more room uh, anywhere around. Well, these four men, as it, uh, the Count Luke tells us, that there was four men bring this paralyzed man to Jesus to be healed, and they can't get in; they can't even get near the place. So <clears throat> they decide that. They're going to go up on the roof, and I think in Luke's account it says there's a set of steps, but they went up on the roof, and they started to dig a hole. Um, and a roof back then wasn't like we have roofs today with shingles and all those things, but there was probably dirt and some wood and some things in there, but they, they actually physically dug through this um, roof, and they took this man on his mat and probably tied ropes to it and lowered this man down to where Jesus was. Uh, <clears throat> You know, that's some pretty good friends when you got friends that will do that for you, uh, tear a hole in somebody's roof. I can't imagine sitting downstairs. Imagine if somebody all of a sudden would cut a hole in here and lower somebody down. It would be kind of interesting, but uh, we probably wouldn't be very happy. Hey, you put a hole in my roof. But uh, uh, here, you know, Jesus didn't seem to be offended. They cut a hole in his roof and they lowered this guy down. 
<clears throat> as we go down through here, we see that even though they lower this man down there, at first, Jesus doesn't heal this paralytic. He doesn't take away this man's paralysis that he can get up and walk, but he says, your sins are forgiven. And if I was that man, I mean, thinking of my humanness, and my friends brought me to Jesus and lowered me into this, took all this effort to lower me in there just so that I might be healed, and all Jesus says to me is my sins are forgiven, I would say, hey, now wait a minute. I came here to be healed, not to have my sins forgiven. I'm more interested in being able to get up and walk. But Jesus says that to him, and, and uh, of course, we don't know the response of this man. He's still laying there, but the Pharisees do have a response. They say, you know, this isn't right. Uh, you know, we, the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, they were okay with, with healing. You know, that's okay. Maybe not on the Sabbath. They argued with Jesus about doing that on the Sabbath. But, of course, nobody's going to argue with anybody that gets healed for the most part. But when it comes to forgiving sins, uh, you're not allowed to do that. Um, he said only God can do that. And in a sense, they were right. Um, only God can heal or can forgive sins. If you turn back to Psalm 103, just for some, uh, maybe some background of what they were thinking or what they were, where they were getting that from. In Psalm 103, verses 1 to 3, it says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my own inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. So here we see both aspects of what God can do. Forgiveness comes from God. Healing comes from God. So while they were okay with the healing, they were not necessarily okay with Jesus saying that he could forgive sins. If you turn over to Isaiah 43, if you're still in the Old Testament there, uh, <clears throat> and we'll go back to Mark and... Um, you can keep your finger in the book of Mark as well. But in Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says, I, God speaking about himself, even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. So we see in the Old Testament, many places, especially in Isaiah, we would find a lot of these verses that talk about God being the one that forgives our sins. So when the Pharisees are saying that only God can forgive the sins, is in reality that we're saying that Jesus himself is declaring himself to be God. He's God the Son. He's God in the flesh, if you will. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. So, and we understand that, that he had that authority to do that, and as he says later in that passage. So <clears throat> the Pharisees are upset about that, and um, then Jesus responds to them <clears throat> back in Mark. He says, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to get up and walk? And... If we think about that, that's probably a rhetorical question, but which is easier to say? And, um, you know, they're both easy to say. It's easy to say your sins are forgiven, and it's easy to say be healed. It doesn't necessarily mean that it will happen, but it's easy to say them. But which is easier to do maybe is more likely the idea. Which is, is easier to do? Uh, <clears throat> my opinion, it seems like it's easier to forgive. Um, it's not always easy. Sometimes we have grudges. Sometimes we have things happen to us uh, that other people have done to us that it's hard to forgive. But in the long run, I think that's probably within our realm of being able to do something besides being able to heal. Um, you know, being forgiving and forgiving someone's not impossible, but healing someone may be um, impossible for us. It's certainly tough. Uh, maybe if you have the gift of healing, as the scripture talks about, or maybe if you happen to be a physician, a doctor who has the ability to, um, you know, help people that are, that are suffering and be able to heal them, possibly. But it seems to me that in the, when we ask that question, which, it's easy, is easy, which is easier to do, it's a lot easier to forgive than it is to heal. Well, Jesus goes ahead and heals the man as well. And he says he did it so that they would know that he has that authority to forgive sins. Again, it's an evidence of his being God. And then he sends the paralyzed man on his way. And, you know, all the people are, are amazed, as they usually are, by what he's done. <clears throat> when we read through this passage, you know, we could find all kinds of things to talk about and full of themes. Um, you know, there's a lot of, you've probably heard people speak on the passage about, uh, about the faith, uh, specifically points out about this man's faith and the faith of the four men who dropped him down through the, through the, through the roof. Matter of fact, I saw a title of a sermon 
Um, it was kind of interesting. It says four of a kind beats a full house, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, I thought, well, that's going to draw you in. You're going to read that because you want to say, <laughs> you know, what's interesting, what it says. But so <clears throat> we could dwell on the faith of those four men or the paralytic. You know, we could dwell on the theme of determination, you know, not giving up and, you know, seeing a crowd like that and still uh, being determined to do it. We could dwell on the theme of uh, Jesus being God. But um, today I would like to just dwell on the facts or the, the subject of healing and forgiveness. And which is greater? Which is more important? So you might want to ask yourself, and I won't ask you to raise your hand, but would you rather be healed or would you rather be forgiven? Um, interesting question. I mean, if for me, I don't suffer much with physical maladies other than getting older and having just the aches and pains of being older and you know but everything seems to work pretty well in my body and you know I don't suffer you know I get sick like everybody else or you know get injured now and then mildly I've never been injured uh, horribly but <clears throat> so to, for me you know healing doesn't seem that important because I, I feel good I maybe I shouldn't say that because that's like a knock on wood thing you know but uh um, you know, I'm blessed. I really feel blessed by God that way. But so I, you know, forgiveness means maybe a lot more to me because, you know, every time you mess up, every time you sin, you realize that you need forgiveness. It's something that we depend upon. But maybe for somebody that's really suffering, somebody that's really got some difficult physical issues, you know, if I was paralyzed, maybe been paralyzed since birth, you know, my focus would be, oh, boy, I would just love to be healed. So, you know, that's a question that all of us may ask ourselves. Would I rather be healed or forgiven? <clears throat> and uh, I think most of us would say both, and we would all say amen to then. But, you know, I think in the long run, depending on your situation in life, you would probably choose one or the other. So, humanly speaking, we may speak more for the healing, but spiritually speaking, most of us understand forgiveness is our greater need. <clears throat> And often it's interesting that sin and physical problems, physical um, pro related problems, are um, you know are they're, they're often related. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you sin, if you go out and you you drink alcohol too much, you get over uh, drink it to the point where you're you're drunk, where you're impaired, and you get in your car and you drive and you wreck and you are paralyzed you could say there's definitely a connection between the sin and the physical malady that you have uh, at that time uh, maybe you decide that you want to do something um, have an affair or something other than with your wife or your husband you have decided to have uh, a sexual relationship outside of marriage and you end up with some sort of disease or um, you know an unwanted pregnancy who knows but things that would definitely the sin has an effect that needs to be healed or maybe you sin by habitually lying and uh, you know that catches up with you people say well I can't trust this person you lose your job you maybe lose your friends you maybe lose your family because you just continually sin and there's a there's a physical consequence because of sin and, you know, there can even be consequences if your parents sin. You know, those birth defects are related to um, uh, children from parents who maybe abused drugs while they were pregnant. Um, what about the abuse of children, you know, after they're born, physical or uh, emotional? Um, it's due to the sin of the parent that the, the child suffers those consequences of those sins. So sin... Can, is related to um, <clears throat> uh, to physical problems at times. Well, at the time of Jesus, a theo theology had developed either you had sinned or your parents had sinned, and uh, otherwise you would have no problems. Uh, you should be blessed, and you know you would never have any difficulties. And we look back at the story of Job. You know, Job is an interesting book when you read through it. But you know, his friends kept telling him, you know, you must have done something wrong. You know, you've had to do something wrong. God doesn't do this to people because they're, they're, they're perfect or they, they're righteous and they're good. 
you know, you did something and you need to find out what you did and you need to be repent of that. And Job kept saying, no, I can't think anything I did. And, and um, you know, they kept saying, no, you need to, to do that. And you need to find out what it was. And, uh, you know, in, in some senses, there's, uh, there's some truth to that uh, when we talk about, <clears throat> um, you know, sin um, <clears throat> causing problems in our life. And because um, we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God, as it says in Romans 3.23. We're all sinners and there's always consequences to sin. Uh, ultimately, sin leads to death. Um, <clears throat> You know, and so in the long run, sin has a consequence. It means that we're all going to die. We know that we're going to do that. But not every illness or physical issue that we do have is caused by a particular sin. Turn over to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. So to just to make it clear, you know, folks have thought that, you know, if something's going wrong in your life, you must have done something wrong that offended God. And Jesus in this passage is basically re- rebukes that or says that that's not necessarily true. And it says, as he went along, verse uh, 1, he saw a, blind, a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So there's that theology that, you know, somebody had to mess up. Now, this guy was born blind, but, you know, I don't know how he could ascend in the womb. Maybe he could, they thought that they could do that as well. But, uh, you know, was this, you know, did this guy sin or did his parents sin? And Jesus said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So there was another reason why this kind of stuff can happen. Sometimes it's just that God can be glorified. Um, you know, sometimes that's just why things happen to us. You know, not everything that happens to us physically, every malady is because of a sin, but um, <clears throat> sometimes they're just there for um, because we're human and we're going to all eventually die and we all have to get sick at some point and, and, and go, but um, you know, ultimately it's because God is going to be glorified uh, in this case um, if it's not because of something that is, was done. It's the same with with Paul and the thorn in the flesh. If you remember the story in 2 Corinthians, it says it was given to him to be, keep him humble and that it was a reminder to him that God's grace was sufficient. So, you know, there's different ways to view how sin affects us in our life. So that being said, <clears throat> you know, physical problems, however they're caused, you know, are, are troubling. But the fact that sin may have caused those physical troubles or uh, or not, sin is even more so troubling. Um, the effects of sin are devastating. Uh, we know that we're all sinners. We know that we're all going to die. John, or excuse me, Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. We know that's going to happen. And if our sins are not forgiven, then ultimately we pay the ultimate penalty beyond that. Uh, we have separation from God for eternity. Um, we can read that in the scriptures. In Isaiah 59.2, you don't need to turn there. I can read it, but it says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. So we're, you know, separated from God by our sin. Uh, <clears throat> I've been reading through the book of Jeremiah, and it's interesting, you know, the, I've only gotten through maybe 12 chapters so far, but you know, Isaiah or Jeremiah in those first chapters is talking about all these sins that Israel has committed, Judah has committed, and that, you know, especially idolatry, and, you know, it's right before Israel's going into captivity and he's, you know, they've rejected God and they're not going to have anything to do with God and his ways. And, and Jeremiah is pointing that out and saying, you know what, these armies are coming down from the north. They're coming to take you away. Babylon was coming. Um, you know, you're going to be separated from this land. You're going to be taken away. You're going to be separated from your God. And you know, what an awful thing. And that's what sin will do. Even go back further to the Garden of Eden. You know, Adam and Eve lived in this garden, and God, it says, came down, and he walked with him on a daily basis and, and talked with him and, and had fellowship with him. And, you know, it was a beautiful thing, a beautiful place. It was, you know, really the garden was the place of the presence of the Lord. And, you know, Adam and Eve sinned. They decided that they were 
tempted and they fell to that temptation and they sinned and you know they were cast out of the garden uh, you know th this very place where God would come and meet with them they were kicked out and they were barred he put angels in front of the place and said you know with these uh, swords and said you know you're not allowed back in here and they were cast out of the presence of the Lord if you will so <clears throat> you know being forgiven of that of your sins being forgiven and having this relationship with God is way better than ever being healed of some physical um, physical malady. Not that that's important, not important, but, you know, again, if you had a choice, um, I think we would choose forgiveness. Well, how do we receive forgiveness? And obviously that is through Jesus Christ. At the Lord's Supper, just before his crucifixion, um, Jesus was... Um, uh, in, instituting the emblems of the new covenant he said uh, the, the fruit of the vine represents his blood he says which is poured out for you for the uh, poured out for the for many for the forgiveness of sins so he died for our sins his blood covers our sins in acts 10 43 it says everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name and then again in first john 1 9 it says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. So there is forgiveness of sins. It comes through Jesus Christ. It's because of him going to a cross and dying for our sins, and that when we believe in that, when we trust him for that, when we confess our sins and say we you know, ask him to forgive our sins, he will do it. It says he is faithful and just, and he will forgive our sins if we confess him and ask. You know, that's good news. That's the, that's the good news of the Bible. I call it the great news, and it's spiritual healing. It's way better than physical healing could ever be. And again, I don't want to diminish those that are suffering, you know, and again, I, <laughs> you know, I don't want to suffer. I don't think I look forward to that in any way, but I know some people are, and I, you know, we certainly want to pray for those people. We want to encourage them and um, ask God to heal them and bless them. But, you know, the spiritual aspect is a lot more important. Well, if we go back to that question that Jesus asked, which is easier? And we can say both are equally easy for God. It's just as easy for God to heal as it is for him to forget, forgive. And uh, both are just, you know, maybe is equally hard for man, maybe harder to heal, as I mentioned. But again, my question is, which would you prefer, the physical healing or the spiritual healing? <clears throat> well, this man in this story in Mark chapter 2 he got both. He had his sins forgiven, and then Jesus told him to rise up and walk and to pick up his mat and to go. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, the scriptures don't tell us anything more about this man. The last thing we see is him walking through the crowd and out the door, and he's gone. We have no idea um, other than the fact that he was healed. In faith, he stood up. I imagine being a paralytic, you don't even know what it's like. Maybe if he was paralyzed from birth, he doesn't know what it's like to stand, or maybe it's been a lot of years. And he's told to get up. You know, it takes faith to do that. And he took faith for him to stand up and, um, and to, to walk out the door. Uh, pretty amazing when you think about it, what he, you know, what he had to do even. But you know, we don't know much about him after that. And, uh, but hopefully we, we would like to think that he understood what Jesus did for him, that not only was he physically healed, but the forgiveness he received was a lot better. It was a greater blessing than he could ever experience on the... Uh, the physical side so hopefully we understand that too um, it's ultimately the greatest need that we have um, that we our sins are forgiven that we're restored to a relationship with God um, again um, most important thing that we could have more than our physical comfort more than anything else that we could ever ask for is to have a God who is faithful and just that will forgive us our sins when we ask him to do that let's pray Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for uh, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Father, that you've made a plan of salvation, which is through your son, Jesus Christ, that we can come before him and confess our sins and repent of those sins and ask for forgiveness. And it says that you'll do that. Uh, what an awesome thing that is. And Father, <clears throat> I know many people suffer physically, and uh, it's draining. It's something that just wears on people. It's something that can, it probably consumes them. 
And uh, Lord, I don't want to diminish their suffering, but I pray that if there's anyone here that's going through something like that, that they would see that um, having their sins forgiven and having a relationship with you is is something that's better than that. It's something that's um, something that's eternally more important. So, uh, Father, give us the grace to understand that. Uh, help those that aren't suffering, even myself, to be compassionate towards those who are and to care about them and uh, try to meet their needs. But, Father, especially help us to, to be able to express that <clears throat> this forgiveness of sins is so much more important. So we thank you for that, Father. We ask your blessing on us. And thank you again for your forgiveness of us and all of us who are sinners and um, really um, need your grace. So we thank you for that and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.